What is up guys, Sarah here and for today's video I'm just going to be breaking down the stock market for complete beginners, basically how to invest in the stock market and just make it as simple as possible. So unless you live under a rock, you know that there's this crazy sickness going around and basically everyone is panicking and this really has caused our market to you know undergo a correction which we are seeing right now. And a lot of people like to say that this is a great opportunity to start investing in stocks and I agree just because it has gone down tremendously and I think that there's a lot of money that can be made. So like Warren Buffett says, be greedy when others are fearful. So while others are just stacking up on toilet paper, you can go ahead and invest your money into the stock market. So before I explain the stock market, I'm just going to say that I am going to try to explain it as if I'm explaining it to a 10 year old, just so you guys can make sense of it because I remember it being really confusing when I first got into it. Also, before we even continue, in the description down below, I am going to put the 11 stocks that I currently am investing in. Also, make sure you smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm because it really does help out the channel. But without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, to start off, what even is a stock? First off, we have in front of us the Apple stock. So let's just say Apple has 5 million shares. And that number right there, 277.97, is a representation of one single Apple share. So let's say right this second I buy a single Apple share. That means I bought the Apple share at $277.97. But let's say I feel like buying two shares of Apple. So if I own two shares of Apple, that means my investment would be worth $277.97 times two. And to give you guys another example, here is the Tesla stock. In front of us, we see that one single Tesla share is worth $546.62. Let's say I want to invest in the Tesla stock and I decide to buy two shares of Tesla. That means my investment would be worth $546.62 times two. Well, let's just say I wanna buy three shares of Tesla stock. That means my investment would be worth $546.62 times three. Now, obviously that number you see right in front of you, that can go up and down, and that is something we will talk about later on in the video. So basically, to summarize, investing in stocks is just buying a piece of a company. To keep it short and sweet, honestly, you can invest with as little as $10, so it really does not matter how much you have. Some people maybe start off with $500, while others start off with $10,000. All right, next important thing is how do you actually buy stocks? So there are several platforms that you can use to buy stocks, and I'm just gonna share a couple with you guys. Okay, so the first one is Wealth Simple Trade. This is the one I currently use, and it's amazing because it is commission-free stock trading, which most platforms don't offer. Well, Simple Trade is also Canada's first $0 commission trading app, which is why it's so popular. I put a link down below if you do want to use Wealth Simple Trade, and you will get a $5 credit if you go through that link. Now, the next one, which is very popular in the USA, is Robinhood. This platform did recently crash, which made a lot of people skeptical of whether or not they should continue using it. But I will say that it is completely free, there's no commission fees, it's also very comparable to Wealth Simple Trade. Honestly though, I would make sure you do some research beforehand if you do want to use it just because of what's been going on with it lately. But I'd say it's going to be fine if you're just looking to buy and hold long term. Now those are the only two options that I'm going to go through with you guys, but honestly there's so many options out there that you can look into. Like there's Weeble, Quest Trade, TD Ameritrade, and the list goes on. So if you want to figure out which platform is best for you, I just recommend you know Googling it or looking at some YouTube videos to see what works for you. But in my opinion, I think those two are probably like one of the best. So let's say you've downloaded one of these platforms and now you're ready to go buy a stock. I'm not actually going to go into details of how you navigate through the app, but I promise you they make it really simple and it's really easy to figure it out on the app. And there is thousands of YouTube tutorials out there if you just need help on actually just like physically buying the stock. Alright, so let's go into how you can actually make money from stocks. There are so many ways you can make money from stocks, but here are the two main ways. So the first way you can make money from stocks is buying low and selling high. So let's say 20 years ago you bought Apple stock. So let's say you held on to that stock for 20 years and you decided you want to sell it today. That piece would be worth a lot more than what it was worth 20 years ago. And so you would end up profiting a lot of money from that. All right, so to give you guys a real life example of this, looking at Tesla, we can see on Tuesday, February 18, a single share was selling for $858.40. Now let's say you actually decide to sell your share on March 13th for $546.62. 
Now, instead of you making money, you're actually going to be losing money. And that's because you originally bought the share for $858.40, and you're just selling that share for now $546.62. So you just lost money. Now, let's look at Apple stock. Let's say on March 13th at 3.30 p.m., you decide to buy a single share for $261.20. Let's say that same day you decide to actually sell it for $277.97, and that was just 30 minutes after. So if you decided to do that, you would actually make a profit. Sure, it wasn't a lot, but you still were able to make a profit. Now, the next way that you can make money in the stock market is by collecting dividends. Now, not all companies are going to pay you dividends, but at the same time, it's usually the bigger companies that do. And so as a beginner, you probably want to invest in those bigger companies anyways. All right, so let's use Apple as an example. Let's say you buy one single Apple share, which right in front of you see is $277.97. So when you buy the share, you are becoming basically part owner of the company. So you're giving your money in exchange for a piece of their company. And because of this, you are paid dividends, which is cash distribution, which is paid usually quarterly or even sometimes monthly. And this does not require you to do any extra work. It is basically just passive income that you receive. And the money will automatically be transferred to your brokerage account, which is the platform you end up using, which are the ones I mentioned above, like Wealth Simple Trade or Robinhood. Now, there's three strategies that I want to go over when it comes to making money in the stock market. Now, the first strategy I want to go over is swing trading. It's basically when you buy a share of a company and you hope that it will go up in value over a shorter period of time, like maybe a few weeks or just a several months. And once it goes up in value, you will then go and sell it. So looking here, let's say you bought a single Amazon share on Thursday, March 12th for $1,676.61. Let's say you decide to sell your share on March 13th for $1,785. You then just made a little profit and that basically is what swing trading is. So people will buy a share in a company, hold it for a little bit, and once they see that it went up in value, basically enough for them to actually make profit from it, then they will go ahead and sell it. So the next strategy, which is my favorite, is just buying and holding. This is basically buying a stock and you hope to actually hold it for you know, a couple years, so maybe two to five years and even more than that. The goal of this strategy is to basically make money long term. So with this strategy, you really need to think about the company as a whole. Like, do you believe in the company? Do you see it doing well the next 10 years? Do you think it's going to grow? So those are really all factors that you need to consider. Let's give you an example of the buy and hold strategy. So in 2009, let's say you invested $1,000 in Delta. Let's say 10 years later, which is 2019, you decide to sell that share. So the share is no longer worth $1,000. It's almost worth $7,000. So you held that investment for 10 years and you ended up getting a really, really good return. This is actually a true story, by the way. So if you had $1,000 invested in Delta in 2009 and you decided to sell it in 2019, it would be worth around $7,000. The next thing I want to go over is day trading. Day trading, unlike the other two strategies we talked about, really focuses on making money, you know, in the short term. So let's say a person buys a share of a company, literally minutes or even seconds later, they will try to sell it and make a profit. I personally have never done day trading, so I really don't know too much about it. Now moving on, how do you actually figure out which company you want to put money in? So of course, you're going to have to do some research. And so what I like to do is, let's say I want to invest in like Tesla, Apple, Amazon. I'll search up Amazon Investor Relations or Apple Investor Relations. That will basically take you to a page that will provide you with so much information and basically a lot of the information you need will be there. You want to read the 10K on that site, which is basically just an annual report and also the 10Q, which is just talking about what's happened in the last quarter. And basically go through as much as you can and learn about the company and you can just figure out from that whether or not you want to invest in it. And this really does play a huge role because you need to know if you actually like the company, if you believe in it, and if you see the company doing well the next 10 years. I also recommend Yahoo Finance and CNBC if you want to look further into a company. So let's say you're honestly just too lazy, you don't feel like you know searching about the company, you don't feel like listening to conference calls, there is a solution for you. So an option for you would be to invest your money in blue chip stocks, which is basically just companies that have a really good reputation. An example of blue chip stocks would be like Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft. 
But not only that, you can also look at another option, which is actually one of my favorite options, which is index funds. Let's look at an example here, which is the S&P 500 index. So when you buy one single share of the S&P 500 index, you are actually buying a teeny teeny piece of 500 large companies. So instead of worrying about the performance of one single stock and losing money if it goes down, you can just look into index funds. It honestly requires very little work and no skill, and it has less risk overall and it has some of the best returns. And you can invest in index funds on the apps that I talked about earlier in the video. And that's all for this. I'm not going to go into details with this, but it definitely is something I can make a separate video on if you guys want. Now, the next thing I just want to briefly go over is how stock gains are taxed. Now, this depends on several factors, including where you live. So, for example, dividends will be taxed at 15% is what I hear from most people. And let's say you buy a stock and you hold it for longer than a year and after a year you decide to sell it. You would be taxed about 15% I'd say. Now let's say you buy a stock and you decide to sell it before you've held it for one year. You'll then end up getting taxed at your income tax rate which is usually higher, could be 20% or even more. But honestly I can't speak for you, you're definitely going to have to google this because it really does depend on where you live. So the last thing I want to go over is why should you even invest in the stock market? Say you're someone who wants to build long-term wealth and maybe you don't really have much money right now. As I've mentioned, investing in stocks does not require a lot of money. You can start with as little as $10. Whereas something like real estate, you're going to need at least like $30,000 to even consider starting. So this is a great way for someone to actually invest their money if they don't have a lot of money but they just want to get their foot in the door. And also if you become a really good stock market investor, you can make a lot of money. There's people out there who are getting 15% returns a year and that's really hard to make in any other investment. And chances are if you're watching this video, you are a complete beginner and you don't know anything about the stock market. So here's my advice to you. Honestly, if this is something you want to get into, now is probably one of the best times. And it does require a lot of work and research, but honestly it is worth it. And I'm going to link down below three books that I think you should read and these will really help you. If you guys want me to make a video on which stocks I think are good to invest in, just let me know down below in the comments. In that video, I can break it down and just let you guys know how to actually figure out if a company is good to invest in and just show you some options that I think are good to invest in. I hope this video helped you and I really hope that you know a little bit more now about the stock market. Obviously, you're not an expert, but you know, I hope this made things a little bit more clear. But with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and until next time.